Hello everyone, welcome back. Hope you're having a great Wednesday. Today is March the 17th and it is St. Patrick's Day. So maybe I should say top of the morning to you and hope that you're uh, enjoying your day today. Uh, of course, today's Tuesday. I'm recording this, so I'm not wearing green, but I will be tomorrow. And uh, uh, I hope that you're having a great uh, say, <laughs> middle of March and we are in the midst of uh, third winter. We've made it through false spring, which was last week and uh, but anyway, I hope that uh, this week is going well for you. Um, I just wanted to apologize for this past Sunday. Um, after church, I everything was great. We had a church service. Everyone was there, and uh, we had a good time. And, and, and I was sitting there after church and uh, checking my phone and stuff. And then all of a sudden, it, I got an email from uh, one of the elders of our church, and he was like, uh, so um, we might have missed an announcement. We were ready to partake of communion because it was Sunday. And all of a sudden it clicked in my head that it was the second Sunday. And I completely, like it was just, just gone. Like I had no, uh, and then I brought it up to a couple of people standing there at church and they were like, yeah, we were wondering. And Oh man, so I apologize for not uh, leading that uh, this past Sunday. So uh, to make up for it, we're going to do it this coming Sunday. So uh, make plans to uh, be ready for that this coming Sunday at the end of the service uh, as we uh, meet together. I also wanted to mention this Sunday, um, I will be around, but Terry is going to be speaking uh, from God's Word. Um, so I encourage you to tune in if you are joining online or we'll see you Sunday morning and uh, he's going to share a few thoughts from his word and then afterwards I'll step up and lead us in, in a time of communion at the end of the service. Uh, and then uh, the next week is Palm Sunday and it's hard to believe we're already looking at Easter. So uh, Palm Sunday and then we have the Good Friday service and then Easter Sunday. And so we're actually going to break uh, for the next couple of weeks from our First Peter study. Uh, we'll resume that on the Sunday after Easter. Actually, it's Easter Sunday. I will bring in uh, the end of chapter two that we were looking at this past week. But uh, we'll resume our progress through Peter uh, on the Sunday after Easter. So uh, I encourage you to uh, these next few weeks to just join us in worshiping and preparing our hearts for uh, the the rem the remembering of his sacrifice and then the celebration of his resurrection and. Uh, so I, I encourage you to, to make plans to be a part of that. Um, I wanted to also share that next week we'll not be having our weekly uh, ministries because of spring break and uh, families that might be away. Uh, we want, uh, we'll want we resume Awana and things uh, the week to come. Tonight we do have Awana and our TNT is meeting uh, and then we'll be off next week for, for spring break. Uh, these last few weeks, we've kind of been walking through loosely the book of 1 Thessalonians, and especially the last couple of chapters of Thessalonians. And we reached the end of the letter, and I just wanted to share those uh, final words with you today from 1 Thessalonians. Uh, I'm really considering uh, how I want to uh, move forward with this uh, these Wednesday updates and uh, sharing quick thoughts from God's Word. I have some ideas uh, with... Uh, using some camera. Uh, I want, what I really want to do is, is be able to take a passage and, and break it down, like, like literally just break it into pieces to show how we can study. Like someone's requested that, that we could talk about, you know, Hey, we say all the time, we should study the word of God. How do you do that? Like, and so just maybe giving examples of, of famous passages or, or doing something like that. Or, uh, someone also said, Hey, just share the, different parts of scripture, you know, like maybe some, some of the Psalms or some of the benedictions or some of the, 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 uh, introductions or, or things of that nature. So uh, I've got plenty, I got lots of people sharing lots of ideas and, uh, I'm kind of navigating that and, uh, just looking at how we want to, I want to continue this. This just kind of blossomed into, uh, doing this weekly. Uh, it really was not intended at the beginning. Uh, 
Uh, however, in the midst of a, a, a brand new pandemic and everyone up in fear and everything, I thought it would be helpful to share, you know, just a quick uh, thought from the word each week to just kind of help people get through. And it's kind of just continued on. And so uh, I look forward to these each week. And so as I, as I study and look at different verses and things, so uh, anyhow, uh, I do want to share the end of First Thessalonians today as we were uh, looking. And the last couple of weeks, we were taking the last sections here where he talked about respecting those and, and, and loving one another. And then last week, we looked at the, the, fra- the famous verses, rejoice always, pray without ceasing, and all these things give thanks. And, uh, and so I just pick up now in verse number 23 uh, of 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. And this is kind of like Paul's um, benediction. This is... Um, a benediction is like a, a closing good thought, a, a closing, uh, we when we hear the word benevolent, like the the bene, the first part of the word means good. And so uh, a benediction is a good word, a good final word as he closes out this letter. Um, and these verses are are still jam-packed with, with truth and with, with comfort and encouragement. So I just want to read them and then we'll share a, a thought or two from them. First uh, Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 23 says, Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely and may your whole spirit and soul and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. He who calls you is faithful. He will surely do it. Brothers, pray for us. Greet all the brothers with a holy kiss. I put you under oath before the Lord to have this letter read to all the brothers. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And that last phrase, and then uh, the letter's done, and then it's send it. And of course, it went to the church at Thessalonica, uh, and then it would continue to be spread around to other churches in the area. And now we have it, of course, here uh, as God's words to us. Uh, Verses 23 and 24, verse 23 is really the benediction part where he's like, now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely and may your whole spirit and soul and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. He's like, guys, I just want you to know I am praying and I pray that God sanctifies you completely. God will, will grow you and will make you completely pure, completely clean at the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's exactly when it will happen. When he returns, our sanctification is complete. The growing process, the, the, the overcoming temptation and, and the, the walking through difficult trials and journeys that's growing us, that's making us more holy, that's making us more like Christ. When he returns, all of that is done. All of that, we will, we will enter into eternity uh, with, with Christ for eternity and we will be completely sanctified, completely clean, completely uh, uh, um, made pure before God. Uh, and there will be no more temptations. There will be no more sadness. There will be no more uh, uh, struggles because it will be done. Uh, and I love verse 24 because he says, he who calls you is faithful. The one who calls you to do this, the one God who tells you to do this is faithful. He will surely bring you to complete sanctification. Uh, and then he says, may your whole spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless. The word blameless uh, simply means that that you, there's no one that can hold something against you. There's no one that can, that has any traction with, with uh, anything against you as a believer, because you uh, are blameless. And we kind of looked at that uh, a little bit as we were uh, studying over in First Peter that that those that try have nothing that they can say against you, and that Peter's telling them to live that way. Uh, so be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Brothers, pray for us. Boy, we use that phrase all the time. Hey, pray for me. Pray for me. Pray for me. And and Paul's like, hey, Thessalonican church, pray for us. Pray for our ministry. And so as as I look at this and I think, man, how often do we use the phrase, but maybe we use it a little little half-heartedly. Uh, you know, we post online, pray for me, or you know, like like he would Paul was sincere. Brothers, please pray for us. Because he knew what they were facing. Uh, maybe he even knew the direction he was headed, which was persecution and death. Uh, as we celebrate, as we worship together and as we walk together, 
We should be lifting each other up in prayer. We should pray for one another. Uh, verse 26, greet all the brothers with a holy kiss. Whoa, that's not COVID approved. Uh, the idea, of course, in that day, culturally, uh, they would greet each other with a kiss. Uh, but Paul there was, what is he saying? He's telling us to be connected in our community, to 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 be together, like like to to uh, have this like relationship with one another, to greet all the brothers with the holy kiss, like the the idea, like we shake hands or we give hugs or or we, and I, even in today's society, it's difficult to not do those things because we so want to be connected together. And I think that as we continue to navigate through COVID, like we have to look for creative ways to connect with one another, to to share with a holy kiss, not necessarily physically, but to but to have this like personal, intimate connection with those that we call believers, with those that we call brothers and sisters in Christ. And so uh, Paul, as he finishes his letter, boy, that's a reminder to us. Are we connecting together to join uh, as a body of believers? I put you under oath before the Lord to have this letter read to all the brothers. And some like, man, he just kind of just blasted this last command to them. He just wanted them to know, listen, I don't want you to just read this and be done with it. I want you to now proclaim this to everyone else. I want you to read this to other people. I want other people to know that. And and the question comes, did, did Paul know that his, his letters would be sitting here in the word of God one day? Obviously, we don't, we, we don't know fully. We know that Peter talks about Paul's scriptures and, and, and Paul talks about Peter's and talk, they both describe them as scripture. They both describe them as words uh, from God. And so uh, maybe Paul had an inclination that maybe his letters were, maybe he was just writing letters and uh, the church saw that there was some, there was the Holy Spirit at work in these words. Uh, but Paul's idea here was, man, to read this to everyone. Like everybody needs this encouragement. Everyone needs to be reminded of First Thessalonians chapter four that the Lord is coming back, and that we who are alive will be caught up with them in the clouds. People in the church need to hear First Thessalonians chapter five that hey, you don't have to worry about things to come because you are secure in the Lord Jesus Christ. People have to. People uh, in the church need to hear, listen, we need to always have joy. We need to always be in prayer. We need to always have a thankful heart. People in church need to hear these things. And so Paul's like, man, I encourage you. Can you just share them? Can you just share this letter to other people? Uh, and then, of course, his final word, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ uh, be with you. And that's that's his closing closing benediction statement. That is, I want God's grace to pour out on you so much that it overwhelms you and that it overflows from you to other people. And may God do that with us. May the God of all peace sanctify us completely. May he make our body, our soul, and our spirit blameless at the return of the Lord Jesus Christ. May we stand before him. And may we do that because God's grace has been poured out upon us. And can I encourage you to, to think and meditate over those words as we continue through this week? I hope that each of you has a great second half of your week. Uh, we're looking forward to seeing you on Sunday. Uh, don't forget, we, we will have communion this Sunday. We will make sure we do. Uh, and then we will look ahead to the next few weeks as we uh, remember Christ's sacrifice on a cross and we remember his resurrection and we celebrate the life that we have because of Jesus Christ. I hope that each of you has a great day and uh, we'll see you next time, everyone.